A harrowing descent into madness, or an even more terrifying descent into literal Viking hell. Helheim, that is. Hi, I'm Brendan with The Leaderboard, and today we're counting down seven facts about Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Ragnarok is nigh. Hellblade was developed by Cardiff-based indie developer Ninja Theory. Ninja Theory has made a handful of games you might have heard of, like Kung Fu Chaos and Heavenly Sword, but they're probably most well known for their famously imported to the West reboot of Devil May Cry in 2013. The game was written and directed by Tamim Antoniades. At the Sony press conference at Gamescom 2014, Ninja Theory announced work on their upcoming game, then known simply as Hellblade. The company does this, uh, makes these trailers for each of their projects as a sort of manifesto of what the game should look and feel like before development begins. Sort of a tone poem for the next three years of their life, if you will. Looking at the Hellblade launch trailer in comparison to the now finished product, things have changed a bit. First of all, I don't know who this girl with the sword is. Second of all, it looks spooky and all, but there's none of that real world emphasis on mental health problems that so deeply shaped the final game. This all makes a degree of sense though, because the launch trailer was made on the astronomically low budget of a couple hundred pounds, according to Tamim. Budget consciousness was part of the game plan from the beginning though. In the words of Ninja Theory's project development manager, Dominic Matthews, after DMC Devil May Cry, we took a step back and saw that the game space had evolved into two distinct markets. On the one side, there are the big blockbuster AAA titles that push production values and are created by teams of hundreds of developers. This is the space where genre diversity and creative risk taking is squeezed in aid of hitting big sales targets. At the other end of the market are indie games where new genres are being created regularly, creativity thrives, but in the indie space, the highest production values are often out of reach given the development resources and budget available." End quote. Ninja Theory, he said, had worked on both ends of the spectrum and wanted to hit it somewhere in the middle, an indie game with AAA production value. They stuck to their guns too. The entire game was made with a crew of only about 20 or so people. After a good reception for the trailer, Ninja Theory, without a publisher yet signed on, decided to move forward with Hellblade at their own personal financial risk. If you love the game or are interested in game development and want even more facts than we can include in this video, Ninja Theory kept an ongoing video diary on YouTube from August 12th, 2014 until May 16th, 2017 the game's entire development lifespan. The first two credits in Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice are not for members of the Ninja Theory development team, but for, in order, the mental health advisor and the historical advisor. These are the first words you see beyond the title screen, before even like Sony Computer Entertainment presents or anything. Obviously, this research was something that the team at Ninja Theory took really seriously. The game takes place in the late 8th century, in the mythical Land of Mist and Fog, specifically the underworld called Helheim. Senua herself is not a Viking, but a Pictish warrior who has found her way to the land and is on a quest to redeem the soul of her lover slain in a Viking raid. To tell you more about the story would honestly be to kind of do a disservice to the game itself. Its elliptical style of storytelling and commitment to slow disclosure is so much of what makes the game such a unique and harrowing experience, and we don't want to spoil it for you. But I will say this. This may seem obvious for a game about somebody with like a reality and perception altering mental disorder, but don't necessarily trust what the game tells you. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Historical research for the game began a few weeks after the debut of the trailer, with the team steeping themselves in Norse and Celtic mythology. They used Pinterest a lot. Yeah. Advising on the historical setting and mythology for Ninja Theory was Dr. Elizabeth Ashman Rowe. She ended up giving the team so much information on Norse mythology, they incorporated these lore stones that, besides earning you a nifty achievement for finding them all, don't do anything but espouse Norse mythology. These lore stones are hidden throughout the levels and are narrated by the character Druth, a former slave of the Vikings and friend of Senua, who taught her much of their mythology. While the game is just packed with this Norse stuff, the Pictish people, who Senua is one, one of are largely lost to history. Most information about them comes from the Romans, who were occupying the British Isles at that time. But the Picts disappeared somewhere around 1000 CE. The game posits that they were wiped out by Vikings, but no one really knows. Senua's trademark hair came from research on the Picts, who would put lime in their hair, leading it to clump up and form what today we'd probably identify as dreadlocks. Senua's face paint is historically accurate as well, as they would paint their faces with woad. Kind of like Mel Gibson in Braveheart, but like, you know, 
300 years before that. Most of her costume came from other Celtic and era-appropriate attire as well. The historical accuracy to the setting of the game gives the more fantastical elements of the narrative a much more grounded feel. If you look closely during some of the more intense parts of the journey, you can even see that Ninja Theory added film grain to the image in the game, which of course makes no sense. It's not like they're shooting on 35, but it's really cool. And it gives the whole thing a much more tactile feel. One major inescapable aspect of Senua's character in Hellblade is her overwhelming psychosis. The insistent whispers, the disorienting hallucinations, the overwhelming paranoia, these are all present in the game from minute one. University of Cambridge professor Paul Fletcher helped educate the team at Ninja Theory on how psychosis could affect people. He wasn't so sure about the project at first, based on the fact that he was, quote, aware that computer games aren't terribly sensitive to handling mental illness. A meeting with director Tamim and producer Dominic changed his mind. Once Professor Fletcher was on board, he and the team at Ninja Theory looked into a variety of sources, including obscure first-person accounts of becoming psychotic from obscure texts in the 1960s, patients of Fletcher's, and of course his own expertise. One of the things that has excited Paul the most? Well, according to him, Hellblade has provided material and content that I've been able to use in my lectures to medical students and the public, so it's already feeding back into educating and helping people. Another aspect of the game that came out of meetings with Fletcher was this overwhelming drive that Senua feels on her journey. According to him, psychotic people often feel like they're on a quest of some sort, which might not make any sense in a subjective reality, but is overwhelming to the person suffering from the psychosis. Auditory and visual hallucinations plague Senua throughout the game, and the narrative even plays with the idea that her entire quest might just be an extended psychotic episode. From a gameplay perspective, the voices actually aid you. Hellblade has no HUD, and the voices will actually give the player information from time to time. Whether that's aiding you in combat or during puzzles, they lend a hand a lot. The most odd thing that I personally felt while playing the game is that I didn't miss the heads up display. The lack of any sort of on-screen text or like lock-on reticules or anything, I, I was happy to lose them. It added to my immersion in the whole thing, especially during combat. Want even more evidence that Ninja Theory took this stuff very seriously? Even the puzzles that Senua solves throughout her journey are symptoms of acute psychosis. Turns out that pattern recognition is a symptom of it, even to degrees that people not suffering from the disease would find completely nonsensical. That's why you're looking at the glyphs! Get the glyphs! One thing you'll notice while playing Hellblade is that there are no cuts in the cinematics. In fact, barring deaths where you have to like, you know, reload your save, there are no film edits in the entirety of the game. This was done for two reasons. Number one, to make the player feel uncomfortable as an observer, and number two, to feed into the idea that Senua has the primacy of this first person experience. There are no outside editors, literally. The amount of research that Ninja Theory put into the mental health of their protagonist really shows, and the fact that none of this comes across as like cliche or preachy or obnoxious really is a testament to their care. Tamim even takes it a step further, claiming that meetings with Professor Fletcher, quote, made him realize that we're living in a matrix, but it's not a computer simulation, it's just my own brain creating a matrix. All right, to me, headphones definitely recommended, by the way, those voices are super great. The tech on display in Hellblade is really stunning. Ninja Theory claims that their 2007 game Heavenly Sword was the first ever video game to use motion capture, and I don't know if that's true, but Hellblade certainly makes it look like it. It's worth noting that Heavenly Sword also had Andy Serkis in it, so, you know, it looks great. If there was a deity for terrific mocap, it's definitely him. So, you know, I guess the whole thing was anointed from the start. Senua's body was actually not designed by hand, but scanned from the body of fitness model Vicky Wilde. For voice and face, Senua was portrayed by German voice actress Melina Jorgens, who was actually hired by Ninja Theory to be an in-house editor for those aforementioned developer diaries. To quote Melina, they just kept asking me to be a stand-in for their tech experiments or to just try out some different styles of makeup for Senua. They started asking me if I could act out little test scenes for them, but they didn't realize that acting is actually my worst nightmare. Melina would supposedly ask her colleagues to turn away from her during Hellblade's more intense scenes. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is her first experience ever acting. The way Ninja Theory accomplished all these shoots on a budget is really a thing to marvel at. Once again, if you're interested, check out those dev diaries. There's a ton of them, way more time than we have in this 7 Facts video. They're really cool to look at, Ikea furniture's involved, the microphone's the most expensive thing, you'll love it, I swear. There is also live action 
action video incorporated it into Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. This was a last minute decision by director Tamim. Head makeup artist and costume designer Jesse Wilde only had a day or two to design all the ancillary characters before they appeared on film for the game. As interesting as Senua's internal journey is, she is definitively a warrior. And you know what that means. We're fighting Northmen. We're ghostly Northmen from hell. When approaching the combat for Hellblade, Ninja Theory purposefully wanted to make it feel meaty. Issuing like the long combos and juggling of their previous titles, they wanted to make a combat system for Senua that was simple, but demanded player engagement. It was important to Ninja Theory to make Senua feel vulnerable during combat, and she does. The Vikings and Norse gods that you fight during it just tower over her on screen, giving you a real sense of peril. Combat is sort of like Bloodborne Light. Victory requires concentration, timing, and strategy, especially when it comes to the bosses. You're fighting Viking gods after all. They're pretty scary. Motion capture for Senua's fighting was done by stunt performer and martial artist Chloe Bruce, who also doubled for Daisy Ridley on The Force Awakens. All of the Northmen were performed by another veteran stunt actor named Kali Nele. The mocap was completed in two days at a studio in London. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice was released on August 8th, 2017 for Windows computers and the PlayStation 4. Reception so far at the time of this video has been excellent. Critics have universally praised its unique approach to story and character, with some minor criticisms coming from lack of enemy variety and the simplicity of the combat. Nearly all critics have recommended this game as an experience you should have, and we here at the leaderboard wholeheartedly agree. And there you have it! Once again, I'm Brendan, and we've made it to hell and back together! Way to go, us! Have you played Hellblade? What'd you think of it? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to click that bell icon to become part of the notification squad, and if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard. Your home for video game fact.